Good morning and welcome to our Monday morning prayer, the beginning of a new week. And I pray that you're all feeling well <clears throat> and that all is well with you. And I see that our dear Sister Jane and Sister Sue have logged in on our daily prayer channel <clears throat> on live stream. Welcome. Ah, and on Facebook, we've got Loretta Davidson and Susan Plummer. Welcome to you both and whoever else may join us. Ah, oh, Lim, M.Y. and Loretta Davidson. Okay, so we begin this morning by first lighting a candle. And I have a special request today because a dear friend of our community, going back nine years, that's dear Anastasia from St. Helens in the UK. Her husband has been through the mill with uh, various things to do with his tumour and today <clears throat> he's returning to Christie's in Manchester which is a, a cancer centre of excellence in Europe and bless his heart he's just troubled by a persistent cough that's really taking it out of him so I'm dedicating my prayer this morning for dear Anastasia and her husband and his name I've just forgotten but it's for Anastasia, her husband and family. So Father, Mother, God, be with our dear sister Anastasia and her husband as they travel to Christie's for the opinion of the consultants, whether he proceeds with more chemo or radium. And we just trust that you will hold them in your loving healing arms this new day, amen. And now we summon the Holy Spirit of God as we use our little Tibetan bells. So let us just for a moment be still as we come into the presence of love. And we begin this morning <clears throat> with a prayer for world peace. We ask that the time for world peace is now. Each person surrender to their higher selves and gain a new inner peace and serenity. Leave behind residual conditioning and emotions of the past and cultivate a new level of understanding, forgiveness and compassion. Enabling the world's population to live together in acceptance of each person's individuality, diversity and belief. As each person moves forward on this level of unconditional love, may they shine and become empowered as they recognize their individual strengths, gifts and talents and accelerate their own learning, experience, knowledge and wisdom. May each person make a difference in our world and from this life experience move forward with understanding and enlightenment. As this prayer is said with the highest level of love, sincerity and integrity, in love, in light and healing, so be it, so be it. And now for our morning prologue for this Monday morning of our brother and sister scenes of Mount Sinai, we read we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother, God, the earthly mother, and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Monday morning we commune with the angel of life saying, angel of life enter my limbs and give strength to my whole body. You now contemplate trees 
as you feel yourself absorbing vital healing energy forces from the trees and the forests of the Creator's Garden. Amen. And now our first reading this morning, uh, here we are, is a beautiful prayer from favorite prayers chosen by people from ordinary walks of life. And the first one is Paul Muncy, a quadriplegic. I don't want to be the Christ, dear Lord. I'd rather be myself and feel free. You keep on calling me and overawed, I beg you saying, dear Lord, don't choose me. I can't do miracles or prophecy. I'm weak and weary, sick and soaked in sin. Yet day and night I hear the same reply, I love you and I want you to begin. O oh Lord, I feel you love me even though you tell me things I do not want to know. That's a real humdinger of a prayer, isn't it? And then there's another beautiful one from Helen Gibbons, a youth worker. God be with you, with God. No prayer unanswered is, if he says yes, tis well, or he answer wait, rest suppliant at his gate. He never answers no, but that in time, some richer, fuller gift is thine. Isn't that lovely? And now for our hymn <clears throat> from Sing Your Faith from the Unitarian Hymn Book. And it's hymn number 205. And it's When I See the Purple Heather. When I see the purple heather like a gown upon the hill, when I see the lark ascending to the sweetness of its thrill, I'm reminded of the mountain and the love that will not cease, of the teacher of God's kingdom and the angel's song of peace. When I see the lake reflecting in its mirror light of day, when I see in April pastures, sheep that gaze and lambs that play, I'm reminded of the healing on the shores of Galilee and the Lord who is my shepherd, who will lead and comfort me. When I see the pathways winding on and on so far ahead, when I see the river widening as it flows along its bed, I can hear a voice proclaiming, I'm the way, so do not grieve. Peace I give like flowing waters. Do not fear, my peace I leave. And that was written by D. Elwyn Davies, 1927 to 1997. When I see the purple heather, not lovely. I'm guided now, ah, where are we? Oh, here we are. I'm guided now to read from this little book called Celtic Prayers by David Adam, and it's a prayers for Monday. God bless the earth and all its living creatures. God bless the earth and its rugged features. God bless the earth, every ocean and sea. God bless the earth and water's clarity. God bless the earth, its atmosphere and air. God bless the earth, keep it in your care. God bless the earth, protect the dear soil. God bless the earth on all those who toil. God bless the earth and its daily light. God bless the earth by your great might. In your caring for others, God cares for you. As you give your life to others, 
God gives himself to you. As you pour out your love, God bless you and guide you. God strengthen and refresh you. God give you courage and hope so that his deep loving care is revealed through you. God created order out of chaos. God brought light out of darkness. God made all things from nothing. God breathed life into all things. And God loves all that God has made. God is almighty who loves you. God is able to uphold and rescue you. Are those words singing in your heart? that God loves you and rescues you? Or are you feeling in the dumps today? If you are, I pray that those words will give you a bit of a spark, not to lose heart, but to trust in that inner knowing that you are loved. I want to play this for you now, just as a, as a little break. And it's Lord of Life by Marilla Ness from her CD, A Call to Prayer.
coming and in my going. And just as I was listening to the music, I was drawn to read today's reading from the little booklet United Christian Broadcasts. And from Monday, the 24th of July, we read, So three mighty men broke through to Samuel 26, verse 16. <clears throat> David knew how to develop other leaders. He didn't use people to get what he wanted. He recognized their talent, gave them opportunities to serve, then rewarded and honored them. And as a result, they were willing to lay down their lives for him. In 2 Samuel verse 23, we read, David said with longing, oh, that someone would give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well and brought it to David. It's impossible to learn leadership without actually leading. After all, leadership is action. As leaders, our natural tendency is to give others tasks to perform rather than leadership functions to fulfill. But if we don't delegate leadership with authority as well as accountability, our people will never gain the experience they need to lead well. If you're a leader, answer this question honestly. Are you providing your people with leadership experiences? But what if they fail? You ask, count on it, they will. But if you've picked people with genuine leadership ability, they will learn from it. Dr. John Maxwell writes, as I've grown older, I've come to think of myself as a lid lifter. That's my main function as a team leader, a lift, lifter, a lid lifter. I've never heard of that before. If I can lift the leadership lids for my members of my team, then I'm doing my job. The more barriers I remove for my people, the more likely they are to rise up to their potential. David developed leaders who became known as mighty men, and you must invest in others too. And God, through Christ, has invested in you and me. God has given to you and me talents, gifts. But you may be thinking, oh, why me? Well, why not you? And I remember a few years ago when I was really struggling with ill health. And I really became quite morose and full of self-pity. And for a professional nurse to exhibit those, oh, oh, I was just a waste of space. But in prayer, I was grumbling with the Lord and I just said, Lord, why me? Why am I having all of this mental health suffering? And he said, why not you? And I've reflected on that every time I become ill. Why not me? If God can give me the sun, the moon and the stars, night and day, then we know that with every good gift, there's also another gift, and that is the gift of endurance. And through our suffering, rather than wallow in why me, Let's bless the suffering. Let's bless whatever it is that niggles at our inner peace and just bless it and give it to God as a prayer. And that's how I manage severe depression every day. I just encapsulate it in God's love and I just present it to God as a prayer. And then ask for the strength to be able to get through each day. And it works. It really does work. So we come now <clears throat> to our morning intercessions where we bring one another. 
where we bring the whole family of God, where we bring all faiths and none, because we are all equal in the eyes of God. God did not create Baptists, Christians, Protestants, Jews, Muslims, and Hindus. God created an amazing child of God, whole, perfect, and complete in the eyes of God. It is we who've created the labels for our different fellowships, and what a mess we've made. When you look at the historical woundedness within the Abrahamic faith of Jew, Muslim, and Christian down through the centuries, oh dear me. But today, you and I can do something to counteract all that negativity and hate. We've come here in love. And I'm not asking you for your belief. And that was the request from Jesus and Francis at the tomb of Francis in Assisi. And it wasn't to invite people into the community by reason of their belief. It was to welcome them as a beloved child of God and leave the rest to God. So the Teo community is the fourth community of Franciscans known as interfaith Franciscans where we embrace God in each other, the God of many names and none, where we do not sit in judgment, where we learn from one another, when we pray together like here. So let us bring whatever ails us, troubles us, niggles at us, name it blessed and release it now to God in a mindset of love and gratitude. And the key, leave it with God and trust. And just keep saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let's do that now. Guided to pick up my beautiful little book of Celtic prayers from Iona, and the intercessions there are succinct, short, and sweet. O Christ of the poor and the yearning, kindle in our hearts within a flame of love for our neighbor, for our foe, for our friend, for our kindred all. From the humblest thing that lives to the name that is highest of all. Kindle in our hearts within a flame of love. We pray now for this coming day and for justice and for peace in our beautiful world, the Cathedral of God. This morning when we went live, we remembered a dear, dear friend of our community and a dear friend to me, and that's Anastasia. She is the most beautiful spiritual soul you could ever meet. Her love of Christ is humbling and he appears to her. And when you're in her company, you sense something very special. But sadly, poor Anastasia has had a lot of troubles to deal with in watching her dear partner and husband develop this tumor and backwards and forwards to Christie's. And today is an important day for our husband. And forgive me, I've mistakenly forgotten his name, but he's going to Christie's anyway this morning in Manchester here in the UK. And Christie's is a world leader. It's a center of excellence for oncology, for cancer in the whole of Europe. We pray God's blessing on them both and on their family. But I want to pray for each one of you here, for dear sister Sue on our live stream channel and her dear friend Paul and to son Emily, daughter Emily and son Ben. I want to pray for our dear sister Jane in Coventry who's here with us and pray for renewed strength and healing 
Proud dear Jan, who's here also on our prayer channel, and for her friend Sonia. And I just want to check that name if I may. I think I might have got it wrong again. Just bear with me. Ah, here we are. Here we go. Yeah, Sonia. I also want to remember Sister Jane's brother, Dave, our dear sister Jackie, and her poorly mom in California. I want to remember all our beautiful trainee monastics who are learning to live and lead that simple life from their own home, following in the footsteps of Jesus and Francis of Assisi. And for those who are not Christian, following in the teachings of their spiritual masters like the Lord Buddha, Vishnu, Ganesh and Krishna. God has many names and none. I also want to remember this morning Anna Christine Haynes who's joined us, John Spence, good morning dear brother in Belfast, Lim Mayam Amen, Monday love and blessing of God on all here, that's lovely, thank you. And our dear brother Skip from America, bless you dear brother. For Carl Pierpoint, for Rebecca Elizabeth Richard, Fausto Francesco de Sanctus, what a lovely name. The Anglican Zordi Lu, wow, welcome. For Kaj Lovic, good morning dear brother, I'm so glad that I found your morning prayers. And we're so glad that you came too, dear Cash. For David Louis Jacoby, welcome Linda Schaff, book Sean Gallagher, good Irish name, welcome. Um, we've got Joseph Ortiz, good morning, dear brother. For Bernadine Heron, for Sid Purba, for Rhonda Arthurs, and for those who will watch this live recording. I just bring each and every one of you now with the whole family of God, all faiths and none, and especially those who are suffering from mental health issues, from cancer related illnesses, for the children of the Yemen who are dying in vast numbers from cholera, where they've only got dirty infected water for the people of Syria, who've lost everything. For our religious leaders, especially for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, for Thich Nhat Hanh, for Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch and head of the Church of England, and the sovereign head of the whole Anglican Communion worldwide. And we are so blessed to have such a role model as Queen Elizabeth. She's given her life selflessly for her people. We thank God for her. We also remember all the men and women who've dedicated their life to the God of many names for unity and peace. For those in ministry, be they a rabbi, an imam, a vicar, a priest, a nun, monastic, who are weary today, who are thinking of giving up the ghost, we pray for them. We pray for them. We pray also for all on our prayer list, for Emma especially and her daughter Jemima, and for the many that email me of their intentions, especially Mary and her, the young friend she took in, Tabitha, who was homeless and abandoned and who's in hospital. We remember her in America. Let us now be still as we come back into the presence of love because God is love. God is love. And I want to pray Sister Miriam's gift to my heart five years ago. And it's the Lord's Prayer from the Anglican Daily Prayer Book in New Zealand where she lives. Eternal Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, 
loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by all the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings and your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth with the bread we need for today feed us in the hurts we absorb from one another forgive us in times of temptation and test strengthen us from the trials too great to endure spare us from the grip of all that is evil free us for you reign in the glory of the power that is love now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And our closing prayer is a reflection from my heart to yours. God has no hands but our hands to know his work today. He has no feet but our feet to lead men in his way. He has no tongue but our tongues to tell men how he died. He has no help but our help to bring them to his side. We are the only Bible the careless world will read. We are the scoffer's gospel, so we are the scoffer's creed. We are the Lord's last message, given in deed and word. What if the type is crooked? What if the print is blurred? What if our hands are busy with other work than his? What if our feet are walking where sin's allurement is? What if our tongues are speaking of things his lips would spurn? How can we hope to help him and hasten his return? As I come to blow out this light, which represents the presence of the God of many names and none, I ask the Lord Christ, our teacher, our physician, our good shepherd, who is the incarnate Son of God, to touch you now, to touch your hearts, your loved ones, and not forgetting those whom we have remembered here and especially Anastasia and her beloved husband. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum. Om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace of all that is sacred to you Reawaken in your heart that you are a beloved of God and it doesn't matter how far you've sunk into the ground, you are precious in the eyes of a loving God. If this is your bedtime, please sleep well. And if you're beginning your day like we are here, I wish you a truly blessed day. And if you are awake and you'd like to join me again, I'm back here at five o'clock this evening. So now I want to play this for you to thank God for your gift of friendship here. And as my granny used to say in Glasgow to me as a little boy, when a family prays together, they stay together. And we are a unique spiritual family. Please, God, we stay together. Here we go. With our hearts. With our hearts we believe, with our mouths we confess. You are Lord, you are Lord. From this day till the end we will sing it again and alive. You are Lord. With our hearts we believe, with our mouths we confess, you 
Blessed, blessed day. Take care, each and every one of you, and know that you are loved here, and that we will always remember you in our prayer throughout the day. So till we meet again, God bless you, and thank you. <laughs>